Hey guys, Omni here. Sorry we're late for this one. I was out of town, so we're a little behind getting this video out, so I do apologize. But we're going to go ahead and I'm not going to give any spiel uh, this time around, just uh, a recap of the last episode. If you want to see my reaction to episode three, go check that out because I've already put enough time off on this one. So guys, if you want to see the full length reaction to this episode, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. It's a watch along format, so you just sync up your own footage with the time code, so my reaction to the entire thing. You also get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel. You get to put forth suggestions and then vote on what movies we react to. We got monthly Q and A's, behind the scenes footage, to try to make it worth your while since you are going to do ways to support the channel. But of course, I'm not ever going to do that. And a simple way you can help us out is just by liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing these videos because it really does go a long way with helping the channel grow here on YouTube. With that all set down the way, guys, let's go ahead and hop into episode four. Here we go. When she honored my father and I. And tell me, Lord Dondarrion, did you think my great grandmother is beautiful as they say? It was half a century ago, princess. Yes, it was. <laughs> Next. And now a child. Hmm. <laughs> My princess, ours is a bond that has long endured. Since Lucas Blackwood, the grandsire of my grandsire, aided the dragon in his war of conquest. The Blackwoods truly turned the tide on that one. Of with the blood of the first men, our history is deeply rooted in this land, which your house has made its home. Your day shall be easy and night safe under my protection. Protection? The princess has a dragon, you dumb c <laughs> Oh my god, what a fucking dickhead. No, did I like that one? Uh, <laughs> the next. Aw. Craven. Oh shit. Princess, would you invent a bridge in three days' time? I would happily row myself back to King's Landing if I brought an end to this ridiculous pageant. Oh! Oh! Shit, the little guy got him! Hell yeah, dude! Holy fuck! How do you think he will take it? Do you speak of how you rejected every suit his grace put before you, or how you abruptly ended the tour with two months remaining? <laughs> Either. <laughs> Both. All of the above. Take oh. <laughs> oh, I miss his long hair, man. He's wearing a crown on his head, too. Add it to the chair. You wear a crown. Do you also call yourself king? Once we smash the triarchy, they name me King of the Narrow Sea. But I know that there is only one true king, Your Grace. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Rise. The realm owes you a great debt, brother. You know, with the the hair coming loose there in the front, it kind of has a little bit of a, a Virgil look from uh, Devil May Cry. He has no interest in such things. I'd like to see them. Uh -huh. Oh, well, then you should not deprive yourself. Mm. <laughs> so salty. How much time passed this time? It is rare for girls in this realm to get a choice between two suitors, no less two score of them. You only want my name in my Valyrian blood for their offspring. I think it's rather romantic. How romantic it must be to get imprisoned in a castle and me to squeeze out to heirs. <laughs> but I am glad you are home. I've missed you too. father seems content to sell me off to whichever lord is the biggest castle. 
Minaks on toilet gaus aga morgen kostas. Abre süd fejitsus. Moi pekni eriksus jailan nike nuho praidasmo brasilio tele uno go daratex. Brasilis ohis piare istas. Ziri lede to de or. No. No, que se creen un tenco. Tota. Lord Corlys is said to have engaged in negotiations with the Sea Lord of Bravos. He plans to wed his daughter Lena to the Sea Lord's son. If House Valarian entered into an alliance with the Free Cities, we would have to seek our own marriage pact. Great. Dude. <laughs> oh god man he's got so many cuts now Taking her down here. This is place. It's where people come to take what they want. A marriage is a duty, but that doesn't stop us from doing what we want. Fucking what we want. Well, that, that, that took a turn. that play like I I don't know how to read that situation man like there was always a little bit of a tension there between those two like especially in that opening scene when the first time we see those two together like with the necklace and stuff and the fact she still wears it and all that them having this kind of push and pull dynamic so I'm just so <laughs> he's so confused with how she was outside <laughs> I don't I don't know what happened I don't understand what what happened Or was that was it a lesson? It was a lesson. Probably could have taught it a different way. Dude, undressing back then is just a goddamn chore, dude. <laughs> Imagine that would be such like a mood killer back in the day at times. I actually no, because you were probably so pent up, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, man. The difference between, like, her and Allison right now is 
an interesting parallel. It, it kind of echoes the one from the last episode between her father and herself, between their two different hunts, and just seeing like how her path, her way, her life is just her taking control of it while the others are completely bound by their lives. She's she's grabbing the reins of her life and steering it while they are being steered by their lives and their duties, which is what I think Damon's trying to teach her. Is like you can have duties, you can fulfill those duties, but that doesn't have to stop you from doing the things you want to do. I was wondering if that boy was going to come back from that alleyway or what that was going to play into. I have... Uh discomforting news. I thought it best shared discreetly before the council. I'm afraid it concerns the princess, my king. Mm. The princess was spied last evening beyond the walls of the keep. In a pleasure house. What of it? She was carrying on with her uncle. They were engaged in behaviors unbecoming of a maiden. What behaviors? What must I say at your price? You enter my bedchamber, accusing my daughter of something. Now speak it plainly. Is this... Did Damon mean to get seen with her down there? Have this rumor monger brought before me at once, and I will take their eyes. <laughs> Leave me. At once. I know this is in Otto's best interest, but, like, the performance says that he really didn't want to tell him this. Oh, yay. Great. My father has made some worrying allegations about you. I think you fucked Damon in a pleasure house. This is a vile accusation. Is it? You Targaryens do have queer customs. <laughs> Your Grace, sister, you must know I would... I would never... You cannot believe such gossip. I am the princess to... To question my virtue is an act of treason. I do not know specific. What your father did not tell you. He reported it to the king. I have heard. So you are accusing me of slanders. You overheard? Mm. Damon never touched me. That's a lie. I swear this to you. Kings strive to find you a good match. And so have I. If that lord were to think that you were being sullied. It would ruin everything. I know. Your grace. Well, I mean, she did she did fuck someone. <laughs> Look at him hobbling into Oh no. Oh god. My daughter. Oh, you defiled her. Still, you say nothing. Oh, what is it, madam, brother? When we were Rhaenyra's age, we fucked our way through most of the brothels on the street of silk. <laughs> She's just a girl. Your niece. Rhaenyra's a woman grown. Better her first experience would be with me than some whore. What lord will wed her now in this condition? Who gives a fuck what some lord thinks? I have spent a lifetime defending you. But your heart is even blacker than I thought. Yeah, I think he... God, this is just another way of getting back of Viserys in some roundabout, weird way, man. When I offered up my crown, you said I could have anything. I want Rhaenyra. I'll take her as she is. You're already wed. That didn't stop Aegon the Conqueror from taking a second wife. You are no conqueror. Give me Rhaenyra to take to wife, and we will return the House of the Dragon to its proper glory. It's not my daughter you lust for, is it? It's my throne. <sighs> Go back to the fair, Damon. Strive to restore whatever scrap of honor remains in you. Or don't. Matters not to me. Damn, man. It is not in Rhaenyra's nature to be deceitful. I cannot say the same for your brother. How does confessing to such things serve him? By reducing you. I mean, yeah. That dagger hmm. once belonged to Egon the Conqueror. Before Egon's death, the last of the Valyrian pyromancers hid his song in the steel. 
from my blood come the prince that was promised. The burden of this knowledge it is larger than the throne. The king, it is larger than you and your desires. You've yet to ask me for the truth of what happened. The truth does not matter, Rhaenyra. Only perception. Your courtship is at an end. You will wed Sir Lenor Valarian, and you will do so without protest. So I can be a remedy for your political headaches. You are my political <laughs> headache. <laughs> Damn, that thing got... I just noticed that thing got so much bigger. And what will you do about the vulture who perches upon your throne? What vulture? Your hand. Otto Hightower has served two kings loyally. He wants Aegon to be named heir. And he will stop at nothing to see it done, including spying on me to bring about my ruin. I will do my duty as heir and with Sir Lainor, but you must first do yours as king. Your Grace. Uh. <laughs> I will never recover from Emma's death. She took me through the worst of my grief. She was a calculated distraction. I only now realize how well calculated it was. That is an absurdity. The queen loves you. Mm. The crown and the realm. Both owe you a debt that can never be repaid. But I can no longer trust your judgment. Man, his performance is so subtle, man. Like, he, like, like, I don't know how to read it. God damn it, man. Like, I mean, I know Allison was a calculation. Why wouldn't it be? But he seems like he legitimately does care about the realm or the king and all this other junk. But I don't know. I'm sorry, what is that? The tea, princess. From the king. Hmm. Will rid you of any unwanted consequences. Still doesn't believe her. Which, I mean, she's not telling the whole truth, so. God damn, man. Oh shit, that's where we end? That's such a weird place to end! Fuck you! Man, that was a wild episode. I wasn't sure where it was going. It was just weaving and dipping and taking all kinds of turns here and there. And again, this, this I think, more so than any of the previous episodes, felt like a chess game. Played by... Mostly b played between Otto and Damon, more than anything, with Viserys and Alicent and Rhaenyra as pieces on the board. You know? I think in that scene... I do think Otto truly does care for the realm, for Viserys, but he's also, we know from our perspective that he's he's ambitious. He's When he gets called out for it, sure, he tries to deny it, as any person probably would, but like, he's, he's striking this balance from, you know, yes, this information did benefit him, but does he really want to be the one to deliver that news? Probably not. Because, like, there's legit pain and frustration and, uh, like, despair in his eyes when he's talking to Viserys and delivering the news and wondering how this is going to be taken because any ill content can reflect back onto him, too. You know, just because this, po this could propel, uh, propel Aegon into being the heir, at the same time, he's the... Sometimes you 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 beat the shit out of the messenger, right? Like p pull a Damon in episode three, um, and who knows how that could have played out either way. But at the same time, Damon is just kind of coming in and manipulating all these other things. You know, we know he had a hand with the Steve Snake and with uh, Corlys and getting that whole thing riled up a little bit more, and you know with what happened with the crab feeder and all that. It's all him making moves at his at his brother. You know, he's trying to get at him in all these different ways. Same thing with stealing the dragon egg and saying he's going to get married and he's got a kid on the way and all this other stuff. You know, same with that whole display. It's all to poke 
the bear. It's all to get at Viserys, and this was another way to do that. You know, bring uh, Rhaenyra into the muck. I don't know if he knew she was going to be spied on. I don't know if that was part of his plan, but he, I think he was trying to get back at Viserys through Rhaenyra. But then when she started to kind of like reciprocate, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if he... Something happened to make him change his mind and back out of it. And I don't know if it was because control shifted out of the situation or maybe that's not what he actually expected for her to go along with it. I don't really know. The whole scene was uncomfortable as all hell. But, like, I don't I don't exactly know what Damon was trying to do there other than... Because, like, I feel like he does legitimately care for her. So, like... Did that outweigh one thing? Did he just have like a change of heart in the heat of the moment that he didn't want to be doing that after a minute? I don't know. I'm just confused on that whole section. But what he did do is kind of spurn on Rhaenyra's fire, man, in more ways than one. Uh, so she did go back and in the heat of the moment brought down Kristen too into uh, you know corrupting him and his vows. Which we they've they've had like a shorthand uh, and a friendship that's kind of been on the back burner this whole time, or they're very close to begin with. But so I, I, he definitely didn't put up much of a fight whatsoever. Uh, but he's also breaking his vows, and then man, but Damon ultimately was trying to teach her a lesson, and much like maybe through her vicariously, maybe get what he's trying to get all this entire life you know, strike this balance between what he desires and what he has to do. And maybe she can fulfill that or take carry that forward, you know, by, you know, she does have to marry somebody she probably doesn't want to, but that doesn't mean it's got to stop her from doing the things she wants to do. So he did kind of instill that on her, and she did carry forward with that as well. And now this final scene where she confronts her father about Otto, about everything that's been going on, she's like, fine, I'll marry the sneeze sake son. I'll do that. But we all know she's also not being completely truthful in this whole situation. I think Viserys even knows that because obviously he sent that maester over there with that concoction to purge her. <sighs> this episode, I think, perfectly encapsulates like the whole idea of the Game of Thrones in a, in a really interesting way that's not wholly straightforward. There are some straightforward plays here and there, and it's just like, ah. And then the continuously com complicating of uh, Alicent and Rhaenyra's friendship, relationship, whatever, at this point, is just getting mucky and muckier and muckier. And then I like the whole relationship with Viserys and Alicent kind of paralleling, you know, Rhaenyra, and, like, you know, being this ball of fire, being this Rebel being this one just kind of getting out of life the things she kind of wants while balancing that. While on the other side, you have Allison, who at this point just completely feels manipulated, lost, isolated, trapped in a situation she doesn't, she never really wanted to be in at all. And her autonomy's just been destroyed while Renera is completely in control in a lot of ways. Not completely, but more in control of life at this moment which I thought paralleled nicely when especially with what the same kind of themes being played out last se episode with Viserys's hunt and Rhaenyra's hunt and how they both kind of progressed and then concluded and the complete differing messages each one of those kind of carried on I don't know there's a lot of uh there's a lot of great uh, storytelling that's happening purely in the scene work and the editing and stuff like that in both these last two episodes as well. But yeah, man, I don't truly know where Damon's at with all of this. I do kind of feel bad for Otto, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Guys, what did you think of the episode? What are your thoughts on how this all transpired? What do you think is going through everybody's heads? 
Sound off in the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that and all my socials in the description box below. Follow me on each and every one of those. Remember, if you want to see the full length reaction, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access to that as well. Speaking of, before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Sherritt, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yori, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Raven McGann. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this week's episode, guys, and I'll see you all next week with episode five. Take care, everybody.